Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. It's a hot July afternoon, but for once, the dock at the Portland Fish Exchange reminds David Townsend of the days when ground fish swam in Casco Bay. We'll learn more at the end of this video, but first, if you plan to buy waterfront property, you may consider aquaculture. And in today's video, we have the top things you should know. Number one, what is aquaculture? Aquaculture, also known as aqua farming, is the controlled cultivation of aquatic organisms like fish, crustaceans, mollusks, and algae. Number two, where can aquaculture be done? Aquaculture products are cultivated in all types of water environments such as ponds, rivers, oceans, and lakes. Freshwater aquaculture is the predominant form, making up about 80% of the U.S.'s production. Number three, what are the different types of aquaculture? Well, if you're raising fish, there are several methods that are used. Integrated Multitrophic Aquaculture, or IMTA, which is an advanced approach that attempts to imitate the ecological system that exists in the natural habitat. Inland pond culture. This process involves the creation of about 20 acres of artificial inland ponds that are six to eight feet deep. Recirculating systems. In this system, there's one chamber where fish are kept and another where water treatment occurs. Open net pen and cage systems. This type of system is used in open water. It involves using mesh cages installed offshore. And finally, flow-through or raceway systems. This type of system is created off of a body of flowing water. Water is diverted from the flowing water and fed into raceway units flowing downstream. Number four, what are the benefits of aquaculture? Well, of course, the primary benefit is that aquaculture provides food. It is also a rich source of biofuels and reduces the U.S. seafood trade deficit. Other benefits include job creation, taking pressure off of wild fish stocks, and a relatively low carbon footprint, at least compared with other meat products. And number five, what are the challenges with aquaculture? The primary challenges associated with aquaculture occur when it is done in an open natural body of water. This is often a concern with marine aquaculture. For example, Fish produce waste in the form of fecal matter and unused feed. All of this waste contaminates the body of water. There have also been many instances where farmed fish or oysters have escaped from their pens. This is a problem because the fish that we grow are actually genetically different from native species. So for example, in Holland, Pacific oysters escaped a few farms and overran the native blue oyster population. The other problem is disease transfer. Even without escape, the species raised in open water farms can transfer diseases to native populations. But having said all this, there are again, of course, many benefits to aquaculture. So now that we've covered the basics of this farming system, let's return to David Townsend and Maine's fishermen. When David Townsend was young, the Maine fishing industry was a vibrant one. Fishermen brought in Maine lobster, of course, but also shrimp, shellfish, and a variety of ground fish, such as cod and haddock. Today, almost all of these are gone. The reasons for the collapse are complicated. Overfishing and new regulations played a role, but climate change and Maine's warming waters is certainly one of the main factors. In fact, the Gulf of Maine is one of the fastest warming bodies of water in the U.S., and this temperature change is now coming for the one species that survived the collapse of the fisheries, lobster. While Maine's lobstermen are known as being great stewards of their marine resources, there's little they can do about warming waters. And for men like David, it's obvious that a new source of income is needed. This is where algae comes in. Sugar kelp, specifically. Kelp is a highly nutritious form of seafood that grows along rocky coastlines. It's easy to cultivate, thrives in a variety of climates, and absorbs carbon as it grows. Even better, it can be grown during the lobster industry's off-season, making it an ideal species for Maine's changing conditions. Which is why it is one of the fastest-growing aquaculture industries in the U.S., and also why the boats are lining up again outside of David Townsend's Portland Fish Exchange. Farming kelp helps us stay who we are, 
a people connected to the sea, says Brianna Warner, head of Atlantic Sea Farms, the company that buys almost all of the kelp that comes into David's Exchange. Yet algae culture is not just for coastal states like Maine. Microalgae, which can be used for biofuels, can be grown in freshwater ponds, making it a viable product for a wider range of farmers and landowners. In fact, we may have a video on microalgae later. But for now, do you have any stories about aquaculture or algae culture? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.